Hello, I'm Pastor Chuck Phelps, Senior Pastor of Colonial Hills Baptist Church in Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank you for joining us today. Electronic church services can never replace the joy that comes when God's people gather. In Psalm 122, 1, David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Do you connect with David's testimony? Does your heart say, I will be glad when they say unto me, let us go back into the house of the Lord. While we don't know how much longer the pandemic of 2020 will impact our ability to get together, we recognize the importance of God's people gathering. We're experiencing a unique tension. On the one hand, we're commanded not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. On the other hand, we know that we're to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So please pray that God will give us wisdom in order to discern the very best time and the very best way to reopen our public services. In the meantime, I'm praying that God will use the electronic service today to bless and challenge your heart. I'd like to ask you to open your Bible with me to Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3, I'm going to be reading from Hebrews 3, beginning in verse 7 down through verse 13. Today's message is entitled, Pulverizing the Stronghold of Procrastination. We're continuing a series of messages on pulling down strongholds. The entire series, including messages on how to grapple with the stronghold of grief, and liberate the stronghold of loneliness, and deal with the stronghold of disease, may be found by visiting our webpage at colonialindy.org. Now, we all face spiritual strongholds. These strongholds impede our spiritual progress. It's great to know that we have the promise of God found in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 4, which says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that is fleshly, but they are rather mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. All right, if you found Hebrews 3, let's read, beginning in verse 7, as the word of God says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the day of provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw me, my works for forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart. They have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Let's ask the Lord to bless as we look into the message this morning. Father, I pray you'd use the message today to move us off dead center, to be found joyfully serving you, that someone today would be persuaded by the Spirit of God to trust Christ as Savior, the one whom to know is life everlasting, that all of your servants would be challenged to use every moment to the best of their ability to serve you till you come or till you call us home. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. A survey of Americans found that only 10% have a problem with procrastination. Now you're probably thinking that number ought to be much higher. And you're probably right. You see, 90% of those questioned never got around to filling in their surveys. Do you know that there really is a Procrastinators Club of America? The Procrastinators Club of America began in 1956 to promote, quote, the philosophy of relaxation through putting off until later those things that need not be done today. I love their motto. Their motto is, we're behind you all the way. Currently, there are 20,000 registered members, but the club acknowledges that they could have as many as 20 million more members, but their prospective members just haven't gotten around to filling in their applications. And no, I'm not really making this up. Someone wrote, procrastination is my sin. It brings me nothing but sorrow. I know I should stop it. In fact, I will tomorrow. Because procrastination is so common to our human condition, most of us fail to consider the danger that, that it represents. Alexander Pope wisely observed 
vice is a monster of so frightful mien, as to be hated, needs but to be seen, yet seen too oft, familiar with her face. We first endure, then pity, then embrace. Years ago, a famous preacher surveyed the Bible in order to catalog the most important words in the scriptures. For instance, he wanted to identify the saddest word in the Bible as well as the happiest word. He discovered an impressive list of words with varying emotions attached to them. When he published his findings in a book, he identified the most dangerous word in the Bible to be the word tomorrow. Let's consider how the stronghold of procrastination entices people to walk through the door marked tomorrow in order to destroy many suspecting victims. In a moment, I want to help you identify the dangers of procrastination. Then I want to show you how to find deliverance from this stronghold. But before we do that, I think it's important for us to come to grips with a couple of discoveries. Let's look at a few together. There are discoveries made at the stronghold of procrastination. Discoveries that we make at the stronghold of procrastination. The coronavirus has made people very sensitive about comorbidity. Unfortunately, it appears that those who present with underlying illnesses are more susceptible than others to bad outcomes when it comes to being infected with the coronavirus. As we consider the stronghold of procrastination, it's important to realize that there are at least two underlying causes which make some people more susceptible to procrastination than others. It needs to be clear to all of us that procrastination affects those already afflicted by presumption and by the inability to set priorities. Let me explain. Presumption is an underlying cause of procrastination. If you presume you have ample time to make a decision or accomplish a task, you'll be tempted to put things off until tomorrow. That is why the Bible warns us against the sin of presumption. Proverbs 27.1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. In James 4, verses 13 and 14, we read, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. None of us has any promise of tomorrow. Yet how often we'll put off till tomorrow what we know we ought to do today. I recently heard someone say 2020 is the most unusual year ever. It's both a leap year and a year in April. I think it's safe to say that the world has not slowed down like this since God made the sun stand still while Joshua led the nation of Israel in battle. So, how are you investing the extra time that you have on your hands? Will your spouse or your children look back and say, though it was the worst of times, it was the best of times? Are you getting to know God better by reading his love letter to you? Are you spending more time in prayer? Presumption is an underlying cause of procrastination. We simply cannot afford to presume that tomorrow will ever come. Failing to prioritize is also an underlying cause of procrastination. Many people perfect the art of staying busy by doing nothing of lasting value. Our blessed Savior made prioritizing easy when he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Six out of the seven days of the week, I write down a to-do list. I would venture to guess that I'm not the only one who lives this way. Can I make a sad confession? There are days that I exhaust myself with all kinds of busy work while failing to accomplish any eternal work. I push the most important task down on my list while I peck away at little things that don't really seem to matter. Someone said, I've dusted my desk and I've reset my watch, I've straightened a picture, I've swatted a fly, I've shifted the tie clip that clips down my tie, I've sharpened each pencil till sharp as a dirk, I've run out of reasons for not starting to work. Listen, if you find yourself exhausted but not fulfilled, it may well be that you've not made God's priorities your priorities. 
The counsel of Christ for those who are frustrated by false priorities is found in John 6, 27. Jesus says, Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. In other words, don't waste your life chasing after that which will be burned. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, so that there's a treasure awaiting you in heaven. Those trapped in the stronghold of procrastination must first wrestle with the giants of presumption and failed priorities. Where the giants of presumption and failed priorities grow, there will be procrastination. Unfortunately, many people never consider what the Bible says about the dangers in the stronghold of procrastination. So let's consider the dangers in the stronghold of procrastination. The Bible repeatedly reminds us of the brevity of our lives. The Holy Spirit uses at least 18 metaphors to show us how uncertain, how brief our life is. For instance, James 4 compares our lives to a vapor. We're just a puff of steam on a window pane of time. In 1 Peter 1, the Apostle Peter compares our lives to grass that quickly grows and ever so quickly is cast into the fire. We are seasonal. We are fragile. In Job 7, verse 6, Job compares life to a weaver's shuttle which is a tool used to cast yarn rapidly from one side of a loom to the other. Your life and my life is a speck of dust between two vast and limitless eternities. Yet, God holds you accountable for how you invest the time that you have. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1 says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Ephesians 5.16 warns us of the need to be redeeming the time. You see, every one of us has an appointment with death. And after death, Hebrews reminds us, we'll each face God's judgment. How very sad will be the fate of the procrastinator in the day of judgment. Procrastination may be life's most dangerous tempter. Let me explain. Procrastination will rob you of success in life. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, provides a vivid explanation in Proverbs 20, verses 30 to 34, when he says, I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it, I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. In short, Solomon is saying, don't put off until tomorrow what you can do today, because if you do, you'll be sorry. I heard a story about a farm boy who accidentally turned over a wagon load of corn in the road. The farmer who lived by the road came by to investigate. He said, hey, Willis, forget your troubles. Come on to dinner with me. After dinner, we'll come back and I'll help you fix up your wagon. Willis responded, well, that's mighty nice of you, but I don't think my pa will like that. Oh, said the farmer, come on, it'll be all right. Well, okay, the boy responded, but my pa won't like it. After a hearty dinner, Willis thanked his host. I feel a lot better now, but... I just know Pa's going to be real upset. Oh, don't be foolish, replied the neighbor. By the way, where is your father? Willis responded, he's under the wagon. Procrastination will rob you of success in life while bringing nothing but trouble to your home and to your workplace. But more than that, procrastination will rob you of service for the Lord. When's the last time you read the book of Haggai? Haggai was the first prophet to be heard after the Jews returned to Jerusalem from Babylon. God used Haggai's ministry to convict the residents of Jerusalem of the sin of procrastination. Fifteen years before Haggai writes, the children of Israel began to rebuild the temple, but the work stopped. Now Haggai speaks on God's behalf. In Haggai 1, he says, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, 
The time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You've sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. He clothed you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, saith the Lord. I'd like to suggest that Haggai's message is a message for our times. Haggai simply points out that the people put off building God's house while they invested their time and resources in building their own houses. The procrastinators did not disagree with the need to build the house of God. They were simply not making the matter a priority. God uses the voice of Haggai to ask some convincing questions. How are your crops doing? How much contentment are you finding with the outcome of your priorities? Does it feel like you're trying to store your treasures in bags that are filled with holes? Now, it's not wrong to build a house. It's not wrong to build a business. It's not wrong to work, to save, or provide for your family. But it's wrong to do all of this without placing any priority on serving the Lord. Jesus so plainly says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Listen, Christian, tomorrow is a dangerous word. Procrastination will rob you of service and take away your eternal reward. The poet said it so well. When I stand at the judgment seat of Christ and he shows me his plan for me, the plan of my life as it might have been had he had his way, and I see how I blocked him here and checked him there, and would not yield my will? Shall I, in grief, see my Savior's eyes? Grief, though he loves me still? Oh, he'd have me rich, and I stand there poor, stripped of all but his grace, while my memory runs like a hunted thing down the paths that I cannot retrace. Then my desolate heart will well nigh break with tears that I cannot shed, I'll cover my face with my empty hands and I'll bow my uncrowned head. No, Lord of the years that are left to me, I yield them to thy hand. Take me, make me, mold me to the pattern that thou hast planned. So procrastination will rob you of success and rob you of service. But even more than that, procrastination will rob you of salvation for eternity. If you have your Bible, let me encourage you to turn with me to Acts 24. I want to tell you about two people you've probably not heard much about. While they were among the rich and famous when they lived, they're quite unknown today. You see, in Acts 24 and verse 24, we read, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, which was a Jewess, And he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Felix and Drusilla heard Paul preach. Felix was the most powerful governor of the Roman province of Judea. Felix was a Greek by birth. He rose to power because of his political connections. And he was married to Drusilla, who was his third wife and was Jewish. Felix seduced Drusilla to leave her husband and marry him. While Drusilla may have been an attractive woman, Felix was far more attracted to her political connections than to her beauty. Drusilla, you see, was the daughter of Herod Agrippa, the king who ordered the death of the apostle James. Drusilla was the niece of Herod Antipas, who took the head of John the Baptist. Drusilla was the granddaughter of Herod the Great, who killed the baby boys in Bethlehem when Jesus was born. Now in Acts 24 and verse 24, we read that Felix sent for Paul and heard him preach. In Acts 24, verse 25, we discover that the Apostle Paul delivered a three-point message. He preached about righteousness, 
and temperance and judgment to come. Like you and me, Felix had no righteousness of his own. There's none righteous, not even one. More than that, Felix was a very intemperate person. Paul spoke to Felix of judgment to come. Every point in Paul's message struck the heart of the governor as Felix came to understand that he had an appointment with death and with the judgment of God. Since he was explaining the Christian faith to Felix, Paul spoke of the sinless life of Jesus. Then he explained how Jesus took all of our sins and spread out his arms in love on the cross of Calvary. How that God poured out his wrath on Jesus as our perfect substitute. Then Paul would have explained the most glorious news the world has ever heard. How Jesus rose from the dead and willingly offers salvation to all who will call upon him by faith. Paul's sermon stirred the heart of Felix. Acts 24, 25 says, Felix trembled. The Holy Spirit stirred the heart of Felix with conviction. Then Felix made a fatal mistake. In Acts 24, verse 25, Felix says to Paul, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Felix procrastinated. Instead of receiving the gift of salvation, Felix procrastinated. Felix did not understand that tomorrow is the most dangerous word in the Bible. The Bible is about today. The Word of God says, As the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Accepting the forgiveness of sin and the gift of salvation provided by the shed blood of Jesus is the most important decision you can ever make. And you need to make that decision now. Procrastination will rob you of salvation for eternity. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. As far as we know, Felix has been living in the flames of eternal hell for 2,000 years, his mind haunted by the fact that he heard the message of salvation, he had an opportunity to come to Christ, but he put it off. Tomorrow never came. Friend, you should not put off the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. Do it today. Romans 10, 13 says, Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it Today, I want to encourage you to seek deliverance from the stronghold of procrastination. Yes, there is deliverance from the stronghold of procrastination. Are you wondering how to stop procrastinating? Do you fear that procrastination is robbing you of success and service and maybe even salvation? Then let me suggest an A, B, C, D plan for deliverance. You ready? A. Ask for God's forgiveness. Deliverance begins when we humbly and honestly come to God and ask for His forgiveness. 1 John 1.9 contains a wonderful promise. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, even the sin of procrastination, and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. So ask God's forgiveness. God is inviting you to do that today. In Isaiah 1, verse 18, God says, Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And then B, begin to do hard things first. Begin to do hard things first. Don't Put off hard things until you feel like doing them. Feelings come and feelings go, but feelings are deceiving. Our warrant is the word of God. None else is worth believing. Let Romans 12, 11 become your motto. Not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Begin to do hard things first. And then C, connect with someone for accountability. Connect with someone for accountability. 
Ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 and 10 reminds us that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that's alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Those who study such things will tell you that people exercise better when they exercise together. People accomplish more when they work together. And surely this is true. God has designed us as believers to see our spiritual commitments lived out in the fellowship of others, exhorting one another. Find someone to exhort and expect that one to exhort you. Set some realistic goals. Be accountable. And then D, do it now. Do it now. An incident from the American Revolution illustrates what tragedy can result from procrastination. It's reported that Colonel Rawl, commander of the British troops at Trenton, New Jersey, was playing cards when a courier brought him an urgent message stating that General Washington was crossing the Delaware River. Rawl put the letter in his pocket and didn't bother to read it until his card game was finished. Then realizing the seriousness of, his, of the situation, he hurriedly tried to rally his men to meet the coming attack. But his procrastination was his undoing. He and many of his men died. Washington, as you know, captured the entire regiment. Norbert Quayle said, only a few minutes of delay cost him his life, his honor, and the liberty of his soldiers. You see, Earth's history is strewn with the wrecks of hashed out plans that were never finished, of unexpected and unexecuted res resolutions. Tomorrow is the excuse of the lazy and the refuge of incompetence. If you need to be saved, do it now. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Don't forget, another procrastinator enters hell every day. If you need to be surrendered, do it now. Tomorrow is the most dangerous word in the Bible. Today, you can pulverize the stronghold of procrastination. In a moment, Pastor Greg is going to be speaking. He's going to provide a number that you can call if you'd like to talk to someone about your soul. You see, we want to help you find peace with God. So call us today, and may God bless you as you seek to pulverize the stronghold of procrastination.